Hey guys, I'm Destiny. This is Monday Mail number 8. A uh, quick reminder, I have the LeRoux shirt listed available again. If you're European and you check out this time, the shipping prices are actually reasonable. Um, the last time that I, uh, there's a whole bunch of complicated reasons for why it wasn't when I relaunched it initially, but I contacted the campaign people and now they have their global fulfillment filled out. So if you have ordered it as a European and you, it charged you like $20 for shipping, you can cancel the order and you can replace it on the European side of things and it'll actually not be insane, I think, or at least not as insane as ordering it through the, uh, American gateway or whatever. I'm gonna hop right into these questions. First one comes from Ormusman20. How do you feel about tr the? How do you feel about transformating? I should have looked at this before. I'm sorry. How do you feel about? I'm gonna assume he means. How do you feel about the transformation of gaming slash nerd culture into the mainstream? It used to be the wild west, uncontrolled by anyone except the people. Now companies are being bought by corporations. Social media is a funnel for advertisement. Nerd culture, nerd culture became something you want to be, not something you are. You do it because it's cool, not because that's what you want to do. I know you've been interested in computer slash games from a very young age. How do you feel about these changes? Anytime a community goes from being small to big, there are some necessary changes that are made. So a small community will cater to a more specific taste. You will have, um, I guess, like, I, I don't know, like, you can use anything that you're into as an example. It could be anime, it could be video games, it could even be, I don't want to say athletics, I guess, because those have always been pretty popular, but basically you'll have like um you'll have a very small community um we, i will say for video games that really like games and really like a certain type of game they like games to be challenging they like games to be creative um they like games to have good stories um they like games to you know not hold your hand the entire way through them etc 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 these are all things that like small communities um enjoy as a community gets wider part of becoming wider is watering down the more extreme elements of that particular hobby in order to appeal to people that would have been turned off by those more extreme elements. That's why you have um, that's why you have people that will become frustrated or upset when their hobby goes mainstream because it appears that now everybody's trying to cater to a wider audience who was turned off by the things that you were most turned on by, if that makes sense. So maybe you really enjoyed the difficulty found in a lot of games, right? Like, um, fuck, even like Super Mario World or whatever, that's a game that wouldn't really be released today because it's too hard, right? I think you can game over completely and have to start from the beginning and, you know, you, what is it, like one hit and you're dead if you're in small mode and then you pick up um, any item or power-up only gets you, you know, two hits until you're dead. These are games that probably wouldn't make it to market today because they're not friendly enough. They don't have checkpoints. They don't walk you through the game enough. So it's really easy if you were somebody that was involved in hardcore gaming in the past to be kind of resentful that your medium is becoming mainstream today you know that being said that really only applies to people that are looking at what is mainstream i think that gaming as a whole has gotten better even though the mainstream stuff might not cater to you just because there's so many more people involved in it and so much more money flowing through it now that on the side projects the little indie projects you're getting games popping up that wouldn't have had the audience you know 10 15 years ago to actually thrive today um, you know, games, the, the little, the weird games I'm playing now, like KSP or, um, RimWorld probably wouldn't have even had, like, if the gaming community was as small as it was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, or 20 years ago even, you know, there's not really going to be a market for a game like that. There's just not enough people involved to sustain all those crazy kinds of projects. But now that you have so many people, um, that are interested in gaming, again, even though you kind of, you know, you can only deal with so many Call of Duties or so many... Far Cry's. I fucking hate Far Cry. I know some people in this video are going to be mad. Um, but, you know, video games like that. But you're also getting, you know, your Bethesda's that are making your games like your Fallout's and your Skyrim's and whatnot as well. These are companies that probably wouldn't have existed because there wouldn't be the financial incentive for them to exist 15 years ago. And now they are. So if you're somebody that's into gaming as like a really extreme kind of thing, you're not doing it because it's trendy, which I don't even think is necessarily a bad thing, but whatever. But if you're into gaming because you really liked gaming, you've played games all your life, et cetera, et cetera, um... I don't think that, I think it's easy to look at like a AAA release happens and it's fucking garbage and you're like, oh, gaming is ruined. But you're only looking at that one, you know, AAA studio that's making shit games and you're ignoring the fact that games like Witcher 3 or engines like the Fox engine, because I'm not going to say Metal Gear Solid 5 was a good game, but, but you ignore that these things are being released that are actually fucking awesome and they only are being released because they're fucking awesome. Um, or they're only being released and are fucking awesome because the gaming community is grounded the size that it is today, you know? So I think it's just good to try to make sure you're grounded in reality of your, of your criticisms or things that upset you. I think that's a really important thing.
Um, there are other things that are kind of tangential to this issue that are a little bit annoying. Um, but I don't think I want to get into those things. Not not because I don't want it, the video to be long, but just because um, just because they're not really directly related to the question. Um, but things like like I will say that like I do see some frustrations with gaming going mainstream when you get people that um. I don't. I don't necessarily think this is a good way to think, but I understand why people think this way. I grew up playing video games more than most people. Right, like, like I would go to sleep as soon as I get home from school, so that I could wake up at two a.m. and play video games for six, seven hours. My parents wouldn't bother me. Um, like I would, or well, I guess five or six hours. But so I grew up very, very heavily invested in video games. Video games was something that was very man heavy, guy heavy growing up. There weren't very many girls involved in it for whatever reason, and you got made fun of. I guess sometimes depending on the community you were in, you know, because you know it's way better to be a football player than a video game player so it's a little bit strange to see a bunch of people today trying to jump on and insist that oh no you know girls have always had equal interest in video games and you know girls have always played just as many games as guys and i was like okay well where were you guys when i was a kid you know like where were all the girls dating the gamer guys when we were all growing up like that, that didn't happen at all right that wasn't the reality at all um not saying that i don't mind the push for it now but you got, i think that it behooves you to be insensitive to those issues um just because that, that I think that explains like a lot of the resentment that a lot of, you know, you see like the MRA types and the MG toe types. I think that it explains a lot of their resentment that they grew up their entire lives being made fun of for playing video games. And then now that they've come of age and now that we're in our 20s and now that being nerdy is hipster or, and popular and trendy, now we have to accept everybody, even though you were kind of ostracized for it a lot growing up. Um, again, I don't necessarily think, I don't agree with that way of thinking, but I definitely understand why people think that way. Hold on, I got a drink. jump cut i should have jewel we'll jump cut these fucking videos no i'm just kidding the second question comes from neos have you ever considered doing more playthroughs of games you really enjoyed during your childhood i really liked your final fantasy 7 playthrough i had a pretty good time going full nostalgia mode while watching you progress through the game it would be awesome to see you play classics slash remakes like final fantasy tactics and metal gear salad Playing through classic games will give me good viewership on like the first day, but then while I'm sitting there actually playing it out, it usually dips off pretty hard, and then it turns into a nostalgia trip where the vast majority of the people that watch are just people that have already played the game, and at that point, it's kind of like, um, why bother? Uh, I, I might, I kind of want to play a few, um, like the Metal Gear Solid series would be really fun to play to kind of compare and contrast to what Metal Gear Solid Five was, but, um... Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe someday. Like, I did I did play Final Fantasy Tactics 1.3 a little bit on stream, which is an, a, a hard mode for uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. I did through 7. Um, I might do, like, Chrono Trigger or something at some point. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Maybe when I run out of single-player games to play. Right now, I really want to beat RimWorld. Right now, I really want to do um, everything there is to do in KSP still. So I have a little bit more on my plate before I go back to looking at older games to play. And then the third question comes from Trebane. Do you believe there is a fundamental criteria for making a competitive game? I do not think there's a fundamental criteria for making a competitive game. As long as it's online, as long as people can join and play, as long as it's competitive, I think that it can be a competitive game. Or maybe I guess those would be my criteria. Um, I'm pretty sure that he's asking this question in regards to games like Heroes of the Storm or more specifically Overwatch, where people will point to, oh, this game is so easy, it's so casual, blah, 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 blah. Well, I mean, a multiplayer competitive game can't really be easy, right? I mean, you could say, like, the mechanics are easier to grasp or whatever, but, I mean, there's still a lot of people that say Overwatch is easy that are rank 47, you know, or people that say that, you know, like, oh, well, League is a game for babbies, and I only play Dota, and they're, like, fucking 2.5k on Dota, and it's like, okay, dog, you sure got the harder game there, you're real good, man, like, I'm sure you would be, you know, challenger and league um i think that people jerk off how hard their game is way too fucking much i mean if a game being hard would make it the best game ever then i think that you know everybody would still be playing fucking rts but you don't see people doing that right um no i don't i don't buy into that whole it has to be super difficult or super inaccessible if anything it's become quite the opposite which i hope people are starting to notice the more accessible your game is the bigger the fan base you have the more eyes you have on streams the more eyes you have on tournaments the more you can pay your players the larger and cooler your events are and that's why league of legends is the biggest esport in the world that's why hearthstone went from nothing to being a pretty massive esport in its own right for a virtual card game um and then it's why csgo and shit are becoming so popular as well like or becoming csgo has had a huge explosion because csgo is super accessible a ton of people playing that game as well um yes i don't believe in any fundamental criteria for making a competitive game or anything like that 
Those are our three questions. I will have the link to the next set of questions posted or the next questions that you can ask to the next Reddit thread posted in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you guys on the next Monday mail. Peace out. Mm -hmm.